but that's really nice. And then in the second year, it added on. So you can see without pruning, it came with some branches. These came from the nursery. One, two, three, four, five, six came from the nursery. We've added these other little ones that were just dards in the second year. So like I said in my talk, second, third, or fourth year, there's no pruning. Almost no pruning. So really nothing to do to this except take off an occasional branch that seems too vigorous. And I haven't, there's not one right here in these first few trees. But the second and the last step is columnarize what remains. And so this one down here needs to be columnarized. So we'll just columnarize it like that. Uh, this one here needs to be columnarized. That's all there is to it. Perfect. You know, this is really nice. Now, this uh, particular branch right here was one of the originals. Now, the only thing that was done slightly different than what I was suggesting is, it doesn't look like that one was tied down below horizontal at planting. That's pretty vigorous. And then somehow it was cut right there. So this will be the first branch we ever take out on this tree. But we've only got one little crop off of it so far. I like to get crops in the second year, third year, and fourth year before I cut off my first branch that came from the nursery. So I'm not ready to cut it off yet, although it's still fairly big. And just, you know, for purposes of seeing how it would look, you know, that's how it would look without it. It looks like a beautiful tree without it, much more balanced. But I generally want to get the fruits off of that before I cut them off. This one here doesn't really need anything. Just to take off that low one. Next None of these. Next year you would have cut the bigger ones off. What? Next year you would have cut those off. Next year I would have cut off that one big one. That's the only cut I would have done. Or the year after. This one doesn't need anything. We've got the only little issues right here. A little too, too vigorous. Well, that's a judgment call. Uh, you could try to take one of them off or two, but it's not necessary. Even if you didn't show up, went to Florida. <laughs> These trees will still be beautiful. Wayne, take the rest of the summer. <laughs> They're really nice trees. <laughs> will you come in here next year, most likely, and take out the bigger ones like that? Or the year after. Okay. Or the year after. I want to get. I don't want to take many off until I get into the fifth year. One thing I always watch for is if it seems like one of these branches is so dominant, it's what we call choking down the leader. Meaning the leader is this thick right here, and then it goes past a few branches, and then it's a little tiny thing. Wherever I see that happening, then I take off that big branch that seems to be choking down the leader. So I want to leave them and grow the apples on them. All I'm going to do is just columnarize these, try to keep them for a couple of years, and then I start my renewal pruning in year five on the tall spindle. So there's really nothing much to do here, John and Dwayne. You've got a great orchard going. When you mean by renewal pruning, you mean taking out larger branches. Leaving a stub and grow a replacement branch in its place. Now this tree is an ideal tree because it was this tall at planting. It grew really well the first year. It was not tipped. It grew quite well the second year. So now at the end of two years, we're pretty close to the top of the top wire. We've got a lot of branches on it. Simply just to keep them and crop them for a few years and then we'll start this process of taking one or two out for years. How many apples should these have on them in this third leaf? Well, that's where we really ought to measure the trunks. So one foot by, above the ground. By using that tool. Losing this little tool I hope to give you yeah, all. I'll just pop it right on and tell you how many apples. Slide it right on there and it'll say, okay, that one's X square centimeters. It should have 25 apples. So this is where you should be measuring. One foot above the grass ground. So your mouse guards are probably about one foot. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Well, you just need to measure a few trees, get a feel for what they're like, and then you just send the people through to adjust them by hand thinning and say, okay, make sure you don't leave more than 30 apples per tree, or 25, or whatever it works out to be. <clears throat> How many guys are putting mouse guards in the trees when they're up like that? The aren't. Most are not. Because when you get a thousand trees to the acre, most people say, I can't afford it anymore. So they don't put it on, but they're paying strict attention to uh, mouse baiting in the fall and keeping that grass away from the tree so we don't get them dirty. When do you do the apple thinning? The apple thinning for these young trees should be done as early as you can get it done after you get your chemical thinning spray done. Now, I, I should have said earlier, maybe Dwayne could correct me if he doesn't agree, but I'm very afraid, 
and leery of putting any chemical thinners on second year trees. They respond too much and they just thin off too easy. So in second year, I don't put anything on, I just hand thin them down to this five fruits per square centimeter. In the third year, I get a little braver and I spray them with some carbo or telfall. And then still thin thin. But then in the fourth year, they're pretty much mature, then I pretty much go after them with fairly regular rates of chemical thinners. Do you agree with that, Dwayne? Or yes, I do. They, they didn't get anything the first year. We just uh, went through and hand thin. John, are these trees irrigated? Uh, yeah. I believe so, yes. You know, we haven't had a high need for irrigation the past couple of years. Right. Kind of, who knows when we're going to need it again. But what about this branch? It's a nice branch, but I want to columnarize it. Do I keep the top or the bottom? I can keep the bottom. The bottom. Absolutely. Yeah, you guys all are looking at already caught the fruit bugs on That's what I would have kept to. You know, this is just little detail work. You don't need to do it. Just try to make this concept of columnarizing everything. And I hope you can see that when apples are just hanging there, even the one that's hanging underneath still gets good color. As soon as you build side branches on it, the one hanging underneath doesn't color. Give me a green apple. Well, that's right. So good color. These would be ones that uh, should have been pulled down below horizontal in the time of planting and all of these that existed. Now that they weren't, I think it's still valuable to pull them down. It's one time in the life of the orchard that you get time for tying down. So I still would do it. If you don't do it, we'll be forced to take off those in another year probably. Little high or possibly spreaders? Spreaders are really not, spreaders will spread things out but the tip still stays up. The value of tying is that the tip is pointed down. It's the tip that controls the branch. Once it's down, then the hormones that it produces are much, much less and it grows only just about two or three inches. If the tip is left up, it'll, it'll keep growing quite a bit next year. Did the growth? Yeah, year before. No, that was all one oh, year yeah. there. It sort of stopped mid-summer and started growing again, but that's all in one year. And that's partially because of the upright angle of it. <coughs> okay, let's go look at some other. We got more. <laughs> well, that's another New England state. We just start doing this on every new orchard. I could retire. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the ideal. And what I want you to have in your mind is sort of the ideal way, and those trees we looked at are really ideal where they grew properly. Uh, this tree is not ideal either because it's a little bit too vigorous, but at least here there's some vigor with which to work. And so I'm going to prune this tree. Uh, it requires some pruning at this age. Uh, the same principles as before. It's not quite up to the height yet, so there's no reason to limit its height. We want it to keep going. Then after that, the second rule is I want to look for the two largest branches on the tree and take them off all the way back to the trunk using a bevel cut. So this is a participatory pruning exercise. In reality, it doesn't matter which are the two. Which do you vote for? Right there? I'm glad. That's all about the largest ones. I want to just emphasize the way I do a bevel pruning cut. I hold my loppers horizontal. I approach underneath the branch and I cut like that so that it's almost horizontal. That cut is almost horizontal, leaving a really long lip on the bottom. From that lip, I hope to get a replacement branch, which is the next one. Nice job. Nice job. I said it was participatory, participatory but ours are already going to prune that. <laughs> okay, we've got two out of there. Now, some of these are really nice. This is really nice, weak. That is nice and weak. This one, although it's bent around and tied, still is nice. These little darts are just ideal for Macintosh. But I still see that I got some strong, vigorous branches. Now we have suggested that in most cases, only take two cuts, just walk away. Come back next year and take two more. But there are exceptions where the vigor of the tree has maybe gotten a little out of control and really should take off another one or two. So if I let you take off one more branch, which would it be? This one right there. Okay, let's talk about why you would take this one off versus the other one, which is a candidate as this one. What's the reason for taking that one off? <coughs> Got too many fruit bites. We won't get rid of those apples. <laughs> you don't want apples, okay? 
<coughs> no, the real reason is uh, this one is going directly into the tractor alley. Right. Now these rows aren't right. extremely close together, but in most cases you're going to have three or four feet by only 11. And this branch really will not work well. Plus it's such a dominant lower branch that if we take that one off, once again, approach the thing from underneath, hold the loppers horizontal, take it off so it's a very flat cut. <coughs> that tree's starting to look much, much better. <coughs> we do have to tell ourselves, you can over prune a tree. There's no reason to take every single bad branch off in one year. Just approach it over several years. Every year come back and take off two more branches. So next year I'll take off that one. Probably take off that one up there. The year after that, you know, I might end up taking that one off up there, and maybe this narrow one here. And the year after that, probably be ready to take that one off, and maybe one of those others. And it's a process you just keep going. <clears throat> I do want to say that in the upper part of the tree, I want to emphasize the leader. Now, this is the terminal point where it started growing last year, and the bud number two and bud number three always tend to be a little narrow and dominant. So I prefer in the springtime to rub those two buds out before they grew into those shoots or to pinch them when they're four inch, three inches long by pinching the tip out with my fingers so that they don't become dominant. When that, failing that, then I just fix it in the dormant season like this. Without, I don't want to keep those, what I want to keep are these dards and spurs because they will produce short bore shoots next year that really make the top easy to manage. That's a nice looking tree. Now, it might be sign rooted and we might always have problems with it, but that's kind of what you'd like to see in a tall spindle tree. That gives you something to work with. When you come to the one that's weak, then it's problematic. Look at the amount of growth. It was only four inches last year, heavily spurred. Each one of the laterals has not grown, so those are difficult. So this is a rescue Eric, effort. Look, I said these are B9, and I'm you know, finding that B9 is particularly you mentioned don't let them crop too much in the second, right. third leaf. Well, that, and I think you've seen a little of that here. Right. And this is another reason why I think this little ruler concept that I have, if you would have come out and put that ruler on that tree and said, wow, it should only carry 10 apples, maybe it carried 30. <laughs> and that graph I showed shows that for every extra fruit, per square centimeter you leave on that tree, you reduce growth about 8%. Wow. So you leave 10 more fruits per square centimeter and you've reduced growth by 80%. And that's why it's so critical to manage crop load in year two, three, and four. But now we're at this stage, I have to admit there's not a great solution. It's always a, a challenge. The things that have worked the best are to number one, take off the biggest branch on the tree. Which is it? Bottom one. Take off that biggest branch. Number two, remove flower buds on the tree by about a third. That can be either by just rubbing your hand on the bottom of all the branches to try to reduce crop load, or taking out more branches. But by throwing a third of the buds on the ground, we can, in theory, focus more of the nitrogen and more of the uh, fertilizer resources from the tree into fewer buds and get better fruit. We're all, this is just a method of thinning. Uh, we'd come out here and hand thin, but this is just a quick way to do it. The last point is particularly what happens in the top. We've tried everything. If you head that, you grow another four inches. Uh, if you head it really down here, by the end of the year you're back to where you were. <laughs> or almost back to where you were. So there's no great solutions. The only good solution is to remove crop and uh, try to just increase the amount of vigor going into that uh, top. And so what I like to do is basically what I did, just knocked off most of the spurs up in the upper part of that tree. Doesn't look great, it's not the best in the world, but that's the way I would leave it. Uh, I don't really favor tipping these back because then you grow back to about where you were at the end of that next year. By removing part of the buds, you can force a little better growth than what you would. Definitely every tree that has a competitor to the leader needs to be fixed. I just I thought I saw one back there. You have to pick one of the leaders. You know, these are too much of a competitor. These were bud number two and bud number three of that particular year. Um, take the biggest branch off, whatever it is. Remove some buds, under part of the tree, remove some buds on the leader, 
and uh, hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> in orchards like this where the majority of the trees are weak, would you consider banding compost to encourage some cyan rearing? Or, or are, we were at well, Allville's in Washington, they took like a mud paste and packed it around the weak tree. Yeah, I, I don't like that too much, but it certainly is an option. If you can get cyan rooting on B9 trees, they don't take off like seedlings. They grow a lot more. We did that successfully with Mark rootstock when we were dealing with Mark. So we ended up with fairly good response. What I favor is, I love the compost and the idea of reducing stress on B9 and getting more moisture in the soil. And if you don't have irrigation, compost works great. But I'm not too in favor of cyan rooting. I much prefer this, what I just did. Um, I had a big argument in Washington in one of the IDFTA tours out there about uh, people that uh, Want to want to contend that stubbing these back will result in better, bigger trees in the end? I don't believe that. My experience is stubbing these weak branches back simply grows a weak replacement tip to it, but you never get it back to what it was, and what's much much better is reducing bud load, like I did. Several tips too. Pardon? Several tips. And sometimes it forks. Several. Take off the biggest branch on every tree. Reduce bud load, make sure there's a single leader in the tree, make sure there's irrigation, single the tips down, fix the bud load. <laughs>